Tom Anderson sat in his favorite armchair by the living room window, watching the late afternoon sunlight filter through the leaves of the oak tree outside. He was a tall, rugged man of forty-five, with graying hair at the temples and laugh lines etched around his deep-set eyes. His hands, rough from years of manual work, rested on the armrests. This was his sanctuary, a quiet moment before the evening chaos of family life inevitably took over. Tom had always been proud of the life he had built. Twenty years of marriage to Sarah, his high school sweetheart, and three beautiful children, Jake, Charlie, and Megan. His role as a father defined him. He wasn't just a provider, but a dedicated, hands-on dad who showed up for every soccer game, every parent-teacher meeting, and every scraped knee. His family was his world, and the love he had for them filled his heart with a sense of purpose. Jake, the oldest at 18, was a high achiever. He was tall and athletic, with sharp features and a confidence that sometimes bordered on arrogance. Tom often marveled at how quickly Jake had grown into a young man, preparing to leave for college in a few short months. Tom had been so involved in every step of his life, from teaching him how to ride a bike to helping him fill out his college applications. He was proud of Jake's determination and grit, even if they butted heads from time to time. Charlie, at sixteen, was the quieter one. More introspective than Jake, but no less talented. He loved basketball and had a natural athletic ability that made Tom proud. Coaching Charlie's teams over the years had been one of Tom's greatest joys. Charlie wasn't as outgoing as Jake, but he had a gentle soul, one that Tom admired deeply. Charlie's sensitivity often reminded Tom of his own quiet moments of reflection, and it made their bond even stronger. Then there was Megan, the youngest at fourteen. His little girl. Megan was a whirlwind of energy, always curious, always asking questions. She had her mother's eyes and Tom's stubbornness. There was something about Megan's innocence that made Tom feel protective, as if the world were too big and too dangerous for someone so full of life and wonder. Megan was the glue that held the family together, her laughter and enthusiasm brightening even the darkest days. And then, there was Sarah. At forty-four, she was still as beautiful as the day they had met, with her auburn hair and warm, inviting smile. Over the years, they had built a life together, weathering the ups and downs that come with any long marriage. There had been rough patches, sure, but Tom had never doubted her love for him or their commitment to each other. She was the foundation of the family, the one who kept everything running smoothly while Tom worked to provide. As he watched the light fade outside, Tom felt a deep sense of contentment. His life wasn't perfect, but it was full. He had given his all to this family, his time, his energy, his love, and it had been worth it. He had built something real, something that mattered. Little did he know. Everything he believed about his family, his marriage, and even his identity as a father was about to unravel. A few weeks passed, and life seemed to return to its usual rhythm. Jake was finishing up his senior year of high school, and the family was deep in preparations for his graduation and move to college. The genetic testing, a mere formality for Jake's college medical history, was something that Tom had almost forgotten about. It was just another item on a long to do list nothing more than a bureaucratic requirement. One afternoon, Tom received a call while at work. He recognized the number as the clinic they had visited for Jake's tests. Thinking it was probably just a routine confirmation or minor update, he stepped outside to take the call. Mr. Anderson, the voice on the other end asked. Yes, this is Tom, he replied, squinting as the sun hit his eyes. This is Dr. Keller from the clinic. I wanted to discuss the results of Jake's genetic tests with you. Could you come in for a follow-up appointment? Tom's heart skipped a beat. Is something wrong? He asked, his voice steady but suddenly tight with tension. The doctor hesitated before responding. It would be better if we discussed this in person. It's not something I can easily explain over the phone. Tom agreed, feeling a growing sense of unease. He couldn't imagine what the issue might be. They were all healthy, there hadn't been any major illnesses in the family. What could be so important that they needed an in-person discussion? Later that day, Tom drove to the clinic, his hands gripping the steering wheel tighter than usual. 
he tried to reassure himself. Maybe there was just a small anomaly in Jake's test results. Maybe they found something minor, something easily fixable. When he arrived at the clinic, he was shown into Dr. Keller's office. The doctor, a man in his early fifties with a kind but serious demeanor, sat behind his desk, flipping through a folder of documents. Mr. Anderson, thank you for coming in, Dr. Keller began, looking up as Tom entered the room. He gestured for Tom to sit down, and Tom did, feeling his heart race with every second of silence that followed. I don't want to alarm you, the doctor said, but there was an unexpected result from Jake's genetic tests. Tom frowned, leaning forward. What do you mean? Is he sick? Is there something we need to worry about? Dr. Keller shook his head slightly. No, it's not that. Jake is perfectly healthy. But when we compared his DNA to the parental information you provided, we found a discrepancy. Specifically, Jake's genetic markers do not match yours. For a moment, Tom didn't understand what the doctor was saying. The words hung in the air, strange and disjointed. Then, slowly, the meaning began to sink in. Wait, Tom said, his voice shaky, are you saying that Jake isn't my son? The doctor nodded solemnly. According to the results, yes. Jake is not biologically related to you. Tom's world stopped. He stared at the doctor, his mind racing. How could this be possible? He had been there the day Jake was born. He had held him in his arms, counted his tiny fingers and toes. He had watched him grow, helped him with his homework, coached his soccer games. Jake was his son. There had to be some mistake. There must be some kind of mix-up, Tom said, his voice rising with desperation. Maybe the samples got switched or something. This can't be right. Dr. Keller shook his head. I understand how shocking this must be, but the testing is highly accurate. There's no indication that the samples were mishandled. I'm very sorry, Mr. Anderson. Tom felt as though the ground had been ripped out from under him. How could this be happening? Everything he had believed about his life, his family, was now in question. I don't understand, Tom muttered, rubbing his forehead in disbelief. How could this happen? I'm his father. Dr. Keller leaned forward, his voice gentle but firm. Mr. Anderson, I know this is difficult to process. If you have any questions or need further testing, we can certainly discuss it. But the results are clear. Tom left the clinic in a daze, his mind swirling with confusion and disbelief. He sat in his car for what felt like an eternity, trying to make sense of what he had just learned. Jake wasn't his son? The idea seemed impossible, unthinkable. He had never once questioned his relationship with Jake. How could this have happened? On the drive home, the questions multiplied. Was Sarah aware of this? Could she have kept this secret from him all these years? Or was it something she didn't even know herself? Tom's stomach churned at the thought. His wife, his partner, the woman he had trusted with his life, was now the center of a growing storm of doubt. When he arrived home, Sarah was in the kitchen, chopping vegetables for dinner. Tom stood in the doorway for a moment, watching her, trying to gather his thoughts. His mind raced with what he needed to say, how he should bring this up, but every version felt wrong, too charged, too heavy. Sarah, Tom finally said, his voice sounding foreign even to his own ears. She looked up at him with a smile, but it quickly faded when she saw the expression on his face. What's wrong? Tom didn't respond immediately. He crossed the room in slow, measured steps and placed the test results on the kitchen counter in front of her. Sarah glanced at the envelope, then back at Tom, confusion and concern etched on her face. What is this? she asked, picking up the envelope. Open it, Tom said, his voice flat, devoid of emotion. Sarah opened the envelope and began reading. Her hands trembled as she scanned the results, and when she reached the crucial part, her face went pale. She looked up at Tom, tears welling in her eyes. Tom, she whispered, her voice breaking. Tom felt a surge of anger, betrayal, and heartbreak all at once. Tell me, he said, his voice low and dangerous. 
tell me the truth. Sarah's lip quivered, and she sank down into a chair. I never meant for you to find out like this, she began, her voice shaky. It was a long time ago, when things were complicated. Tom's hands clenched into fists at his sides. Complicated? You had an affair. How could you keep this from me? Tears streamed down Sarah's face as she struggled to speak. I didn't know for sure, Tom. I thought, hoped, that Jake was yours. I didn't know how to tell you. And when he was born, you loved him so much. I couldn't bear to destroy that. Tom's heart pounded in his chest, his mind reeling from the revelation. The woman he had loved and trusted had been lying to him for almost two decades. Everything he thought he knew about his family was unraveling before his eyes. Sarah, he said, his voice thick with emotion, how many times? Sarah's sobs grew louder, and she couldn't meet his eyes. There were, a few times, early on in our marriage. But it stopped. I swear it stopped. Tom felt the weight of her words crash down on him, threatening to crush him. His entire life had been built on lies. The family he had cherished, the children he had raised, were not what he thought they were. Without another word, Tom turned and walked out of the kitchen, leaving Sarah sobbing at the table. He needed space, time to think, time to process the shattering truth that had just upended his world. Tom barely slept that night. He lay awake, staring at the ceiling, his mind racing with thoughts he couldn't control. His whole life, everything he believed in, had been thrown into chaos. Jake wasn't his biological son, and now, the ugly truth of Sarah's infidelity loomed large in his mind, poisoning every memory they had shared. He couldn't stop the questions from flooding his thoughts, questions about Jake, about Sarah, and about his other children. If Jake isn't mine, Tom thought, what about Charlie? What about Megan? The thought hit him like a punch to the gut. He needed answers, but the possibility that the two other children he had raised and loved might not be his was too horrifying to fully grasp. The next morning, after a sleepless night, Tom made a decision. He needed to know the full truth, no matter how painful it might be. He would have DNA tests done for Charlie and Megan. He couldn't live with the uncertainty gnawing at him any longer. He wasn't sure how he would handle the results if they confirmed his worst fears, but he knew he couldn't move forward without knowing. That evening, Tom confronted Sarah once again, this time with a cold, determined resolve in his voice. I want DNA tests for Charlie and Megan, he said, his voice steady but cold. Sarah's face went pale again, her eyes widening in fear. Tom, please. Don't do this. Don't tear the family apart any more than it already is. I need to know, Tom said firmly, his voice cutting through her pleas. If Jake isn't mine, I need to know if Charlie and Megan are. Sarah looked down at the floor, her hands trembling. She didn't speak for a long time, but Tom could see the guilt and pain written across her face. After what felt like an eternity, she nodded slowly. I'll arrange it, she whispered her voice barely audible. The next few days were a blur for Tom. The tests were done quickly, but the waiting was excruciating. Every interaction with Charlie and Megan felt like walking on broken glass. He tried to keep things normal, tried to act like the loving father he had always been, but inside, he was drowning in doubt and uncertainty. Every time Charlie asked for help with his basketball drills or Megan hugged him goodnight, Tom's heart broke a little more. He loved them so deeply, and yet now there was a question hanging over everything. The results came in a week later. Tom sat in his car outside the clinic, the envelope in his hand, unable to open it for several minutes. His heart raced, and he felt as if the weight of the world was pressing down on him. Finally, with trembling hands, he tore the envelope open and read the results. Charlie, not biologically related. Megan, not biologically related. Tom's entire body went numb as the words sank in. Neither Charlie nor Megan were his biological children. The truth hit him like a freight train, leaving him breathless. He had raised them, loved them, given them everything, only to find out that none of them, none, were his. Tom sat in his car, staring at the results in shock, his mind spinning out of control. 
How could this have happened? How could Sarah have betrayed him so completely, so profoundly? All three of his children were the result of affairs, affairs that Sarah had hidden from him for years. Tears welled up in his eyes, but he blinked them away. He felt like a fool, like everything he had believed in had been nothing but a lie. The family he had devoted his life to wasn't truly his family at all. It was built on lies, deception, and betrayal. That night, Tom confronted Sarah one last time. He handed her the test results without a word, and she took them with shaking hands. Her face crumbled as she read them, tears streaming down her cheeks. Tom, I'm so sorry, she sobbed, collapsing onto the couch. I never meant for it to happen like this. I never wanted to hurt you. Tom stood there, staring at her, his heart hollow and cold. You've been lying to me for our entire marriage, he said, his voice thick with emotion. Every child I thought was mine, none of them are. You've destroyed everything. I didn't know, Sarah cried. I didn't know for sure who their fathers were. I hoped. I hoped they were yours. I prayed they were. But I was too scared to find out the truth. I was afraid of losing you, Tom. Tom's hands clenched into fists at his sides. He felt a surge of anger so intense it made him shake. You should have told me the truth from the beginning. You should have given me the chance to know, given me the choice. But you stole that from me. Sarah sobbed harder, but Tom's anger wouldn't let him feel sympathy anymore. He had loved her, trusted her, and she had betrayed him in the worst possible way. I want a divorce, Tom said, his voice cold and final. Sarah's eyes widened in shock. No, Tom, please. We can fix this. We can get through this. You're their father in every way that matters. Tom shook his head, his heart heavy. Maybe I am, he said, but I can't stay married to someone who lied to me like this. I can't live in a marriage built on betrayal. Sarah broke down completely but Tom turned and walked away, feeling nothing but a hollow emptiness inside. He didn't know what the future held, but he knew one thing for certain, his marriage was over, and the life he thought he had was gone forever. In the days that followed, Tom struggled with how to tell the children. He and Sarah agreed they would sit them down together to explain the divorce, but Tom couldn't bring himself to tell them the real reason. How could he look them in the eyes and tell them that everything they knew about their family was a lie? When the day finally came, they sat in the living room, Tom on one side of the room, Sarah on the other. Jake, Charlie, and Megan sat on the couch, looking confused and anxious. We have something to tell you, Tom began, his voice strained. Your mom and I, we've decided to get a divorce. The kids reacted immediately. Jake stiffened, his face hardening. Charlie looked down at the floor, his brow furrowed in confusion, while Megan's eyes filled with tears. Why? Megan asked, her voice cracking. Why are you doing this? Can't you fix it? Tom's heart shattered at the sound of her voice, but he couldn't tell her the truth. He couldn't break her like that. It's complicated, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. But your mom and I, we've grown apart. We still love you and that will never change. Megan sobbed, and Charlie looked completely lost. Jake, ever the stoic, just clenched his jaw and looked away. The conversation ended in tears, confusion, and heartbreak, and Tom knew that no matter what he said, the pain would linger for all of them. He had lost everything that mattered to him, and now he had to live with the fallout of a betrayal too deep to heal. The decision to divorce Sarah weighed heavily on Tom. The papers were filed, but the emotional toll was far from over. In the days following the conversation with their children, the atmosphere in the house was thick with tension and grief. Tom had moved out of their family home and into a small apartment on the other side of town, a place that felt cold and empty compared to the life he had once known. The first few weeks were the hardest. Tom found himself struggling to adjust to the silence of his new home. His evenings, once filled with the sounds of his children laughing, arguing, or asking for help with their homework, were now painfully quiet. He would sit alone at the small kitchen table, staring at the empty chairs around him, wondering how his life had fallen apart so completely. 
Every weekend, Tom would see the kids. They were supposed to come over, and while he tried to make those weekends as normal as possible, nothing felt normal anymore. The kids were different, quieter, more distant. Jake barely spoke to him unless necessary, and even then, there was an edge to his words, as if he blamed Tom for everything. Charlie, always the sensitive one, looked lost, his usual quiet demeanor now weighed down by confusion and sadness. Megan, the one who had always been the most affectionate, was the hardest to face. She would hug him when she saw him, but there was a new hesitancy in her touch, a sadness in her eyes that broke Tom's heart all over again. One Saturday, as Tom and Megan sat on the couch watching a movie, she turned to him with a question that Tom had been dreading. Dad, why did you and Mom really get divorced? Megan's voice was small, but the question hung in the air like a thunderclap. Tom's stomach twisted into a knot. He knew this question would come, and yet he still didn't have an answer ready. How could he tell her the truth? How could he tell her that she wasn't biologically his daughter, that their entire family had been built on a lie? He hesitated, struggling to find the words. Megan, it's complicated, he began, the familiar phrase feeling weak and inadequate. Megan frowned, not satisfied with the vague response. But you said you loved each other. How could you just, give up? Tom's heart ached at her words. He reached out, gently brushing a strand of hair from her face. Sweetheart, sometimes, love isn't enough. Sometimes people make mistakes, and those mistakes hurt too much to fix. Tears welled up in Megan's eyes, and she looked away, biting her lip. But why can't you just forgive her? Why can't you just fix it? Tom swallowed hard, feeling the sting of his own tears threatening to surface. He wanted to tell her everything, to explain why forgiveness wasn't enough, but he couldn't bring himself to shatter her world any more than it already had been. It's not that simple, Tom whispered. Your mom and I, we've hurt each other in ways that are hard to heal. But no matter what happens between us, we both love you and your brothers more than anything in the world. That will never change. Megan nodded, though the sadness in her eyes didn't fade. She rested her head against his shoulder, and Tom wrapped his arm around her, holding her close. In that moment, he wondered if he would ever be able to truly explain the depth of the betrayal, the pain of realizing that the children he loved so fiercely weren't his by blood. But then again, did that even matter? Wasn't he still their father in every way that counted? As the weeks passed, Tom's internal struggle only grew. His weekends with the kids were bittersweet, filled with moments of love, but shadowed by the knowledge that they were living in a fragile illusion. Every time he looked at them, especially Megan, he wondered if he should tell them the truth. Could he really keep this secret for the rest of his life? One evening, while sitting in his small apartment, Tom found himself reaching for his phone. His sister, Jennifer, had been the one family member who had supported him throughout the divorce. She knew something was wrong, even if Tom hadn't told her everything. He dialed her number, and after a few rings, she answered. Hey, Tom. How are you holding up? Jennifer's voice was warm and concerned, a comfort Tom hadn't realized he needed. I don't know, Tom admitted, his voice heavy with exhaustion. I feel like I'm drowning. There was a pause on the other end of the line. What's going on? Is it about the kids? Tom sighed, running a hand through his hair. Yeah. It's about them, and Sarah, and, everything. I feel like I'm living a lie. Every time I see the kids, I wonder if I should tell them the truth. But I don't know if I can. I don't want to hurt them. Jennifer's voice softened. Tom, you've been through so much. You're their father, no matter what those DNA tests say. You raise them, love them, and they love you. That's what matters. But I understand why you're torn. I don't know if I can keep this secret, Tom said quietly. But I'm terrified of what it would do to them if they knew. Jennifer paused again, and when she spoke, her words were gentle but firm. Whatever you decide, you need to do what's best for them. Maybe they don't need to know right now. Maybe they never do but you can't keep carrying this burden on your own. You need to talk to someone, Tom. Tom knew she was right. 
The weight of everything, the betrayal, the lies, the uncertainty, was crushing him. He had never been one to seek help, but the idea of therapy had crossed his mind more than once. Maybe it was time. A few days later, Tom made an appointment with a therapist. As he sat in the waiting room, nervously tapping his foot, he wondered if therapy could really help him navigate the mess his life had become. Could it help him heal from the pain of Sarah's betrayal? Could it help him decide whether or not to tell his children the truth? When the therapist called him into her office, Tom felt a wave of anxiety wash over him. But as he sat down and began to talk, something in him started to unravel. For the first time in months, he allowed himself to feel everything, his anger, his grief, his confusion, and in that space, he began to understand that the path forward wouldn't be easy, but it was possible. Weeks turned into months, and while the pain of the betrayal still lingered, Tom slowly began to find some clarity. He still loved his children, and in time, he realized that his bond with them didn't have to be defined by biology. He was their father in every way that mattered and no DNA test could change that. One evening, after a particularly emotional therapy session, Tom sat in his apartment, staring at the family photo he had taken from the old house. It was a picture of all five of them, smiling and happy, taken years before everything had gone wrong. In that moment, Tom made a decision, he wouldn't tell the children the truth. At least, not yet. Maybe one day, when they were older, when they could better understand the complexities of life, he would explain. But for now, they needed stability, and he needed to continue being their father, the only father they had ever known. It wouldn't be easy, and the pain would never fully go away, but Tom was beginning to accept that life, despite its betrayals and heartaches, was still worth living. And as long as his children needed him, he would be there for them, no matter what. Months had passed since Tom had made the decision to keep the truth about the children's paternity to himself. Life after the divorce was a slow and painful adjustment. He still lived in the small apartment across town, where the sounds of loneliness echoed louder than any voice. His relationship with the kids had become strained, but he did everything he could to maintain a sense of normalcy during their weekends together. Tom had settled into a routine, one that was eerily predictable and quiet. He'd wake up, head to work, come home, make a simple dinner, and then sit in silence until it was time for bed. It wasn't much of a life, but it was what he had left. One Saturday morning, as Tom prepared for the kids' weekend visit, a knock on his door startled him. He opened it to find Jake standing there, his face set in a hard expression. Hey, Jake, Tom greeted, a mixture of surprise and concern in his voice. I didn't expect you this early. Everything okay? Jake walked inside without a word, and Tom noticed the tension in his son's posture. Jake had been distant since the divorce, and Tom had sensed his growing resentment, but he hadn't pushed. He figured Jake needed time to process everything, just like the rest of them. I need to ask you something, Jake said, turning to face him, his voice tight with emotion. And I want you to tell me the truth. Tom's heart skipped a beat. He knew this moment was coming, but he hadn't expected it to be today, or so soon. He swallowed hard, bracing himself for whatever Jake was about to ask. What is it? Tom asked, trying to keep his voice steady. Jake's eyes locked onto his, filled with a mix of anger and pain. Why did you and Mom really get divorced? Tom froze. His mind raced back to the therapy sessions the conversations he had replayed in his head about whether to tell the kids the truth. He had convinced himself that keeping the secret was the right thing to do, but now, faced with Jake's direct confrontation, he felt the weight of the lie press down on him. Jake, it's complicated, Tom began, but Jake cut him off, his frustration boiling over. Don't give me that, Dad. Jake's voice was sharp. I'm not a kid anymore. I deserve to know what's really going on. Something doesn't add up, and I've had enough of the lies. Tom took a deep breath, trying to steady himself. It wasn't just one thing, Jake. Your mom and I, we had a lot of problems, things that we couldn't fix. Jake's eyes narrowed. What kind of problems? Because I don't buy that you just grew apart. Mom's been acting weird, and so have you. There's something more to this, isn't there? 
Tom looked down at the floor, his heart pounding in his chest. He had sworn to himself that he wouldn't burden the kids with the truth, but now, as Jake stood in front of him demanding answers, he realized that he couldn't keep dodging it forever. There's more to it, Tom admitted, his voice low. But it's not something I ever wanted you to find out this way. Jake crossed his arms, waiting, his jaw tight with frustration. Jake, Tom began, struggling to find the right words, the truth is, I found out, you're not my biological son. The room seemed to freeze as the words hung in the air. Jake stared at Tom, his face a mask of shock and disbelief. What? Jake whispered, the color draining from his face. Tom felt his throat tighten. When we did the genetic tests for your college medical history, it came back that you're not biologically related to me. Jake took a step back, as if the ground beneath him had suddenly shifted. So? Mom cheated on you? Tom nodded, his voice thick with emotion. Yes. It was years ago, early in our marriage. She never told me. I didn't know until the tests came back. Jake's face twisted in anger and hurt. And Charlie and Megan? What about them? Tom hesitated for a moment, then forced himself to continue. I had them tested too, and they're not biologically mine either. Jake's fists clenched at his sides, his face flushed with rage. So you're saying everything, our entire family, has been a lie. Tom's heart broke as he saw the devastation in Jake's eyes. No, Jake. It wasn't a lie. I may not be your biological father, but I've loved you, Charlie, and Megan with everything I have. I'm still your father. Jake shook his head, his voice thick with emotion. But it changes everything, doesn't it? You're not my real dad. Mom lied to all of us. How are we supposed to just pretend that doesn't matter? Tom stepped forward, trying to reach his son, but Jake pulled back, his face twisted with a mixture of confusion and anger. I don't know how to deal with this, Jake said, his voice breaking. I feel like my whole life's been ripped apart. I know, Jake. I know this is hard, Tom said, his own voice cracking with emotion. But I need you to understand something. I'm still your dad, no matter what the DNA says. I raised you, I loved you, and nothing can change that. Jake stood there, breathing heavily, his eyes brimming with unshed tears. For a moment, Tom thought he might lash out, say something cruel, but then Jake turned and stormed out the door without another word. Tom watched him leave, feeling the weight of the moment crush him. He had feared this day for so long, but now that it had come, he wasn't sure how to pick up the pieces. Later that night, after hours of replaying the confrontation in his head, Tom heard a soft knock on his door. He opened it to find Charlie standing there, his face full of concern. Dad, Charlie began softly, Jake told me what happened. About the DNA. Tom's chest tightened. He had been hoping to tell Charlie and Megan himself, but it seemed that Jake had taken matters into his own hands. I'm sorry you had to find out this way, Charlie, Tom said his voice heavy with regret. Charlie stepped inside and looked up at his father, his eyes full of quiet understanding. It doesn't change anything for me, he said, his voice steady. You're still my dad. You've always been my dad. Tom's eyes filled with tears as he pulled Charlie into a hug, holding him tightly. Thank you, son, he whispered, his voice thick with emotion. That means more to me than you'll ever know. In the weeks that followed, Tom faced difficult conversations with both Charlie and Megan. They struggled to process the truth, but slowly, they began to accept that their bond with Tom was unshakable, even in the face of such painful revelations. As the months went on, Tom and the kids began to rebuild their relationship, bit by bit. The wounds from Sarah's betrayal would never fully heal, but Tom was learning that fatherhood wasn't about biology, it was about love, sacrifice, and being there, day in and day out. He had been their father in every way that mattered, and that would never change. Life wasn't perfect, but it was beginning to feel real again. Tom knew the road ahead would still be difficult, but with his children by his side, he felt a glimmer of hope. They were a family, not because of blood but because of the love they shared. 
and for Tom, that was enough. Months turned into a year, and Tom found himself slowly settling into a new normal. The divorce from Sarah had been finalized, and while the pain of betrayal still lingered, it had become a dull ache, something he could live with but never truly forget. His relationship with the children had begun to stabilize, though the initial shock of the truth still lingered in the corners of their lives. Tom continued therapy, something that had become a crucial part of his healing. He had learned to accept that the family he had once known was forever changed, but through that acceptance, he also found the strength to move forward. He wasn't just their father by blood, he was their father because of the love and care he had given them, and that love was stronger than any DNA test. Still, there remained one unresolved dilemma, a question that had haunted him since the day he had learned the truth, should he tell Megan and Charlie the full story? Jake already knew, and while their relationship was still strained, Jake had begun to come around, spending more time with Tom, acknowledging that despite everything, Tom had been the father he needed. But Megan and Charlie, while accepting Tom as their dad, were still in the dark about their true paternity. Tom grappled with the moral weight of this decision. Megan was only 15 now, and Charlie had just turned 17. They were still so young, and he didn't want to damage their sense of identity. But at the same time, he felt a responsibility to be honest with them, to give them the full picture of their family history. The longer he waited, the more it felt like another betrayal. One evening, after a particularly long and emotional therapy session, Tom sat alone in his apartment, turning the question over in his mind once again. He thought about how much the kids had already been through, how they had adjusted to the divorce, how they had dealt with the upheaval in their lives, and how they were finally beginning to find stability. Was it fair to drop this new, life-altering truth on them now? The next day, Tom decided to talk to Sarah. Despite the bitterness between them, they had remained in contact for the sake of the children, keeping things civil. Tom knew that if he was going to tell Megan and Charlie the truth, he needed to make sure Sarah was on the same page. He drove to the family house, her house now, feeling a mixture of dread and determination. When he arrived, Sarah was sitting at the kitchen table, sipping a cup of coffee. She looked up as he entered, her face still showing the wear of everything they had been through. Tom, she said softly, what brings you here? He sat down across from her, taking a deep breath before speaking. We need to talk about Megan and Charlie. Sarah set her cup down, her face growing tense. What about them? Tom leaned forward, resting his hands on the table. I think it's time they know the truth. Sarah's eyes widened, and she shook her head. Tom, no. They don't need to know. They're doing fine. Why would you want to put them through that? Because it's the truth, Sarah, Tom replied, his voice firm but calm. They deserve to know who they are. We've kept this secret from them for too long. It's not fair to them. Sarah's hands trembled slightly as she placed them in her lap. They're still so young, Tom. I don't want to hurt them. Tom sighed, feeling the weight of his words. I don't want to hurt them either, but this isn't something we can keep hiding. One day, they'll find out. Maybe not now, but eventually. And when they do, if we've kept it from them, they'll feel betrayed all over again. I don't want that. Sarah looked down, her eyes filling with tears. I just wanted to protect them. I thought. I thought if we didn't say anything, they could keep believing that everything was fine. I understand, Tom said gently. But they have a right to know the truth, no matter how painful it is. We can't protect them from everything. What we can do is be honest with them and help them through it. There was a long silence between them, the weight of years of secrets and lies hanging in the air. Finally, Sarah nodded, her voice barely above a whisper. Okay. We'll tell them. A week later, the day Tom had been dreading arrived. He and Sarah sat down with Megan and Charlie in the living room, the same room where they had first told them about the divorce. Tom could see the confusion in their eyes as they sat down, sensing the seriousness of the conversation before it even began. What's going on, Dad? Charlie asked, his voice weary. Tom took a deep breath, his heart pounding in his chest. There's something we need to tell you, he began, 
glancing at Sarah for support. She nodded, her face pale but determined. It's about the reason your mom and I got divorced, Tom continued, his voice steady despite the storm raging inside him. There's more to it than we told you before. And it's something that affects both of you. Megan's eyes widened, her hands gripping the edge of the couch. What do you mean, she asked, her voice small. Tom exchanged a look with Sarah before continuing. When Jake was getting ready for college, we did some genetic tests for his medical history. Those tests showed that. Jake isn't my biological son. Both Megan and Charlie gasped, their faces filled with shock. Megan's eyes darted to Sarah, her voice trembling. What? How, how is that possible? Sarah spoke up, her voice shaky but resolute. There were mistakes I made early in our marriage, things I deeply regret. I had affairs, and none of you are biologically Tom's children. The room fell into a stunned silence. Megan and Charlie sat frozen, their eyes wide with disbelief, the weight of the revelation crashing down on them. Charlie was the first to speak, his voice shaking with anger and confusion. So, we're not really dad's kids? Tom's heart broke at the hurt in Charlie's voice. He leaned forward, his voice gentle but firm. That's not true, Charlie. I may not be your biological father, but I'm your dad. I've been your dad your whole life, and nothing can change that. Megan stared at the floor, her face pale, tears welling up in her eyes. Why didn't you tell us sooner, she whispered. Why did you keep this from us? Tom's voice cracked as he answered. We were trying to protect you. We didn't want to hurt you. But I realize now that keeping it from you wasn't right. You deserve to know the truth. Megan looked up, her eyes filled with pain but it hurts anyway. Tom nodded, his own eyes brimming with tears. I know, sweetheart. I'm so sorry. I wish I could make it easier for you. Charlie stood up, pacing the room, his hands running through his hair. I don't even know what to think. Everything we thought we knew about our family, it's all a lie. No, it's not, Tom said, his voice firm. Our family wasn't a lie. I may not be your biological father, but I've loved you both since the day you were born. That's what matters. Charlie stopped pacing, turning to face Tom, his expression torn between anger and heartbreak. But it feels like a lie. Megan wiped at her eyes, her voice barely a whisper. What do we do now? Tom reached out to her, taking her hand gently in his. We move forward. We're still a family, no matter what and I'm still your dad, if you'll let me be. Megan looked up at him, her lip quivering as she nodded. You'll always be my dad. Charlie stood there, his face still full of uncertainty, but after a long moment, he nodded as well. Yeah. You're still our dad. The room was heavy with emotion, but Tom felt a sense of relief wash over him. The truth was out, and while the road ahead would be difficult, they had taken the first step together. For the first time in a long time, Tom felt a glimmer of hope. As the evening wore on, the conversations continued, full of tears, confusion, and tentative steps toward healing. Tom knew that there would be many more difficult days ahead, but for now, they were facing it together. And in the end, that was what mattered most. No matter the betrayals, the broken trust, or the truth of biology, Tom had been their father in every way that counted. And as he looked at Megan and Charlie, he realized that this truth was enough to rebuild their family, piece by piece.